The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone to this month's Alcor webinar, ServiceNow integration with Ansible and AWS. We will begin in just a few minutes. Alcor is pleased to welcome you all to today's webinar. Alcor Solutions is a global digital transformation services company serving Fortune 500, government agencies, and other leading organizations in multiple industry verticals across US, Canada, Europe, Japan, and India. Alcor advises leading businesses on cloud platforms, digital workflows, technology and robotic automation, enterprise service management, HR solutions, integrated risk management, and data and analytics. Alcor is a ServiceNow Elite Partner, AWS Partner, an Oracle Gold Partner, and also partners with technologies like Azure, Salesforce, FireEye, Tanium, and several other cutting-edge technologies. We advise leading businesses on cloud platforms, architecture, enterprise service management, and integrating IT service delivery. We also provide business process consulting to recapture, re-engineer, and improve processes that can easily be automated to deliver the real value. The Alcor Consulting Team has excellence in business strategy, cloud technology, and organizational change management. Our ongoing webinar series is designed to inform, enlighten, and start discussions within your own organizations. If you require any additional information after listening to today's webinar, please reach out to us through our website, www.alcortech.com. We have some time reserved at the end of our webinar for Q&A, so please feel free to type any questions into the questions section of the webinar dashboard. Today's webinar topic is ServiceNow Integration with Ansible and AWS, presented by John Venomen. John is a solutions architect in Alcor Solutions. He's AWS certified and worked on cloud implementation projects for two of the world's largest banks. He has been working in the DevOps space for over a decade. I will now turn the webinar over to John. Thank you for the introduction, Anna. I'm looking forward to doing this presentation. Awesome, lead away. 
Okay, so um, today's presentation is going to be on the integration of Ansible with ServiceNow. Uh, this is something that we've been doing quite a bit of lately and um, wanted to get the story out there and describe how it's done, why it's done, uh, what the advantages are. So first off, why does Alcor integrate Ansible with ServiceNow? Well, as noted a moment ago, uh, we are a service partner. Uh, we have a lot of customers who come to us uh, for our expertise with ServiceNow. I'd say it's probably the main thing that we are known for. Uh, we've got a great CSAT so score of uh, 9.5, uh, which is very unusual, uh, very high performance there. At the same time, we have a lot of customers who come to us and they are using Ansible already. Uh, Ansible is an open source software for provisioning, configuration management, and application deployment. It runs on Linux and can configure both Linux and Windows. Um, I think the uh, I think the thing about Ansible that has made it so popular is that it's simple. Uh, but it is also powerful. Uh, I've worked with a lot of uh, automation solutions uh, for companies big and small, um, even to hold a, a patent for some of those. Uh, I've been working with automation for over a decade, and Ansible is quite unusual in that you can pick it up pretty easily, um, but it is also very powerful. And I think that's contributed to its popularity um, in the pic shown. This is a snapshot of how Ansible's popularity is compared against uh, Chef and Puppet, which are probably the other two that are very well known. Notice that Ansible's popularity is just grown and grown. And to an extent, Puppet and Chef, uh, their, their usage has, has shrunken a bit. Now, this isn't a knock against Chef or Puppet. They're great pieces of software, uh, very powerful. They, they scale very nicely. Uh, but what we personally find with our customers is that they just keep coming to us and saying, you know, help, help us with Ansible. Uh, we, we're doing so much work with Ansible. It's, it's so useful to us. Uh, we could use some additional help. Now, ServiceNow, also offers uh, great automation features. Uh, in particular, uh, ServiceNow offers a cloud management platform. In the 2017 Istanbul release, uh, it added quite a few features to it, include uh, simplified VM creation for Azure, additional features for AWS CloudFormation and Azure ARM templates, and the inclusion of some standard tags for VMware VM provisioning. So ServiceNow itself has some great automation features, and I don't want to discount the power of ServiceNow, uh, and it's it's continued to improve. So uh, I would I would highly recommend taking a look at that as well. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with ServiceNow alone uh, when it comes to cloud management. As I see it, ServiceNow and Ansible fit together like a lock and a key. Uh, ServiceNow features easy to use interface, has modules that span across the entire IT enterprise, everything from IT service management, configure, configuration management, uh, security operations, governance, risk compliance. So it's a, it's a very powerful platform. Uh, our customers are getting a lot of a lot of, um, they're able to leverage it to get their work done uh, efficiently and reliably. I think what Ansible does is that it extends ServiceNow uh, because Ansible in particular has hundreds of modules and that list of modules is growing all the time. Uh, there's everything from provisioning bare metal servers, to provisioning virtual machines uh, and everything from OpenStack, VMware, uh, Azure Cloud, AWS Cloud. The, the thing that is 
remarkable in my mind about Ansible is that it enables this, this goal of hybrid cloud that the industry has been talking about for years and years and years. I think it's one of the, the first tools to, to really bring it to the masses. Another kind of interesting thing about Ansible that doesn't really get a lot of publicity is that you can use Ansible to manage your uh, network devices. So this is kind of unusual that you can configure switches, you can uh, push out firmware upgrades, um, you can make changes to routers, firewalls, et cetera, um, using Ansible. And another neat thing about Ansible, which uh, a lot of people don't realize, you can use it for Windows automation, which is um, you know, kind of a surprise because Ansible is a part of uh, Red Hat, and Red Hat is you know generally perceived as a uh, Red Hat Linux company. Um, you can do Windows automation with Ansible, so it's a it's a great tool. I, I love it, but I also appreciate that we can combine it with ServiceNow. All right, so here's where. Uh, is the where we're going to get into the nitty gritty here. So um, fundamentally, uh, ServiceNow can integrate with other uh, web services using outbound REST calls. So uh, ServiceNow outbound REST functionality allows you to retrieve, create, update, or delete data on a web services server that supports the REST architecture. Um, this is all fairly straightforward for uh, for developers, I'd say. Um, but this is this is the part of ServiceNow that gives us that gives us the power uh, to integrate with other platforms. You know, so we can this isn't just about um, integrating with Ansible. We can also integrate with uh, AWS, we can integrate with Azure, uh, we can integrate with uh, almost anything that has a uh, an API. Oh, and a couple other points that I almost glossed over. Uh, part of this, uh, it, an important part of the power of uh, ServiceNow is the ability to do the authentication, the ability to do variable substitution, the, the ability to script these outbound calls. So um, this isn't just about you know, um, hitting a, 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 an endpoint in AWS and getting a file or, um, you know, rebooting a server or something like that. We can do uh, fairly complex tasks uh, leveraging uh, these abilities, particularly the abilities to create a workflow and to uh, create scripts and to do variable substitution. Okay, and here in the uh, here in the top right, we have <laughs> a very simple illustration of how um, how this works. And you know, I, I apologize in advance. I I'm certain that I have a technical audience, and um, you know, this is kind of dumbing it down a bit. But um, just uh, you're forewarned. So we uh, we have ServiceNow, uh, which of course is a cloud-based application. Um, our ServiceNow instance uh, talks to other um, services that are out there. Again, those services could be AWS, Azure. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we are talking to Ansible Tower. We're lit literally saying, you know, please do this thing for me. Um, at, 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 the, at the most simple, uh, that's what we're doing. So uh, web services make it possible for applications to connect to other software applications over a network, allowing exchange of information between the provider um, and the consumer. A web service consumer requests information from a web service provider. You know, this is all this is all straightforward. The key to it is that ServiceNow is able to consume web services from third-party providers or from another ServiceNow instance. In this particular case that we are describing today. Uh, we are working with Ansible Tower. Now let's talk about um, 
let's talk about tower for a minute. Uh, with Red Hat Ansible Tower, you can centralize and control your IT infrastructure with a visual das dashboard, role-based access control, job scheduling, integrated notifications, and graphical inventory management. You can easily embed Ansible Tower into existing tools and processes with the REST API and CLI. So what this means, Ansible originally uh, was a command line tool uh, written by an engineer at Red Hat. And, uh, you know, for the most part, he just wanted to automate some tasks. I, I think that um, in the beginning, you know, it was focused on provisioning. It was command line. Uh, you were probably going to use a route to access it. As time progressed, uh, engineers started to do more and more with Ansible. And then eventually, uh, Ansible Tower came out as a separate product. So what Ansible Tower does is extends the power of Ansible itself. Uh, so as, as mentioned, I probably should have included a, uh, a screenshot of what Tower looks like. Um, but as, as mentioned, it, it gives us the ability to control access to the playbooks. Um, it gives us the ability um, to manage um our systems uh, that we are running playbooks against but the part of it which we are particularly interested in uh for integ integration with stars now is that we can leverage ansible tower to ex to execute and playbooks remotely and uh i included a bunch of footnotes in this presentation so um after after the presentation's done, you can take a look at the uh, the PDF, and you can uh, get more detail on the aspects of this. Also, uh, playbooks are Ansible's configuration, deployment, and orchestration language. They can describe a policy you want your remote systems to enforce, or a set of steps in a general IT process. Um, so, let's see how to put this. Um, in the past, a lot of automation work was done with uh, Python scripts and Bash scripts and the like. Uh, what Ansible brought to the table are these playbooks. And in the playbook, um, we can define what, what it is that we want to do, what kind of things are we automating, and we can leverage Ansible modules to do that work. Now, the great thing about Ansible modules is that it's basically an opportunity for us to streamline the work that we want to do in Ansible. So, for instance, uh, back in the back in the olden days, when you wanted to do automation, a lot of it was was done with scripts, and uh, those scripts, you know, you'd have an engineer write some scripts, and then he, you know, he'd save them on some, you know, some some Git repo or something like that. And a lot of the time, it wasn't too clear. Um, what the scripts were doing or um, how they were working. You know, we had issues where, you know, uh, people might put in hard-coded passwords and certificates and things like that. I, I think that scripts just weren't really optimum for automation. So um, Ansible playbooks have definitely uh, made that more elegant and easier to support and faster to get things done. If Ansible modules are the tools in your workshop, playbooks are your instruction manuals, and your inventory of hosts are your raw material. At a basic level, playbooks can be used to manage configurations of and deployments to remote machines. At a more advanced level, they can sequence multi-tier rollouts, be rolling updates, and can delegate actions to other hosts interacting with monitoring servers and load balancers along the way. Now, I want to talk about this for, uh, for a minute because I think this is another part of the power of Ansible, which is that um, we don't have to use an Ansible playbook to do a single thing. Uh, we can use Ansible playbooks to do a series of things. So for instance, um, if you've ever deployed 
uh, Red Hat OpenShift or Red Hat OpenStack, um, it, the deployment process is done with Ansible playbooks. Uh, so if you look at OpenShift, for instance, when someone is new to OpenShift, they don't have to get into the complexities of deploying an OpenShift cluster uh, because a lot of those complexities are abstracted out by the Ansible playbook. So this allows the person deploying the cluster to focus on what's important, which is that, you know, what are my um, what are my IP addresses? What are what is my storage? What does my storage look like? Um, basically, it means that somebody can deploy an OpenShift cluster uh, without deep expertise into OpenShift. They can they can get that expertise as they continue to work with the product, but it streams it streamlines the process of deploying a product that is quite complex. So, in the uh, top right, that is my my uh, my my best attempt to uh, illustrate what the communication looks like when we are using ServiceNow with Ansible Tower. So we basically have an end user. That end user is making a service catalog request to ServiceNow. ServiceNow lives in the ServiceNow cloud. ServiceNow makes a REST API call from ServiceNow to Ansible Tower. Ansible Tower is providing the API that we're leveraging to run Ansible playbooks. And then Ansible Tower is running those playbooks against infrastructure. Another cool thing here, um, and again, this is super important, is that uh, Ansible Tower and your infrastructure, uh, it, it could be in a public cloud, it could be in a, a, a private cloud, uh, it could be in two different public clouds, it could be in a, a hybrid mix of both. Another, you know, a, a very important part of the power of this solution and something that our customers have really grown to appreciate is that this solution does not require you to work in AWS alone or Azure alone or even on-premises by itself. You can mix them all up uh, because Ansible works across a number of cloud providers as well as on-premises. I'm gonna get to that uh, during a case study that is later in this presentation, but I just wanna stress that this is possibly one of the most important features about this solution. So, there is a complex series of steps that must be completed before ServiceNow can interface with Ansible Tower. Um, I've kept this presentation uh, fairly uh, high level. In fact, uh, earlier this presentation was much longer. And what I found was that I was including parts in the presentation that I, I think were just going too far into the weeds. Um, of course, you know, I have limited time to do this presentation. And this this solution, it's it's quite complex. Um, there's a there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, we have to create the Ansible playbooks that Ansible will run. We have to define the certificates that ServiceNow will use to authenticate with Ansible Tower. We have to create API endpoints that Tower provides to run the playbooks. We have to define the REST calls. Every one of these steps um, is, you know, takes takes a bit of work. Uh, we are able to do this via a, a lot of trial and error. Um, we, we first started doing this quite a while back. Um, I, I think that Ansible's popularity really started to skyrocket about five years ago, and you know, ServiceNow has been popular for as long as I can remember. Um, but you know, when we first saw Tower come out, you know, we could see that oh, um, Tower is going to allow us to do some things uh, which weren't otherwise possible uh, before. So 
as noted, the integration process is not simple. Uh, we have we have an entire team of experts, and we work collaboratively to complete these integrations. A lot of trial and error, uh, a lot of long conference calls, um, trying different combinations of rest calls and variable substitution and all kinds of uh, fun stuff like that. A um, lot, of, lot of messing around with certificates. I, I wish there was a, a, a simple way to do these integrations you know it'd be great if there was just some some button you could push that would just combine your ansible tower uh and your ansible playbooks and service now but the the integration work is complex once all this uh, preliminary work has been completed a service catalog item is created in service now uh, the catalog item can represent anything that can be run by ansible so that's not just you know provisioning a virtual machine or provisioning a bare, bare metal server. Uh, it could be just about anything you'd like to do with Ansible. Um, take a look at the footnotes that you'll see at the end of the document, um, or you can just Google Ansible modules, and you will see that there is a there's a tremendous amount of things that you can do with Ansible. Um, and again. You know, you don't have to sit there and hack with scripts. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. A lot of, a lot of this has already been written uh, by people in the community, uh, by engineers at Red Hat. Um, contributors are adding to Ansible from all over the world, and the product just keeps improving. Uh, just a little, uh, a, a little anecdote of why I love Ansible so much. Um, so years ago, I worked on a, a very large cloud uh, project for a, um, one of the biggest banks in the world. And during that project, we had to write tremendous amounts of code. We had to take existing um, pieces of software and we had to modify it uh, to work with our infrastructure. Um, we had to figure out how to optimize things, how to make them repeatable, how to make them secure. Uh, we had a we had a pretty large team of people working on this, and we invested a lot of time doing this. Now, you know, keep that in mind. That project took years. The first time that I worked with Ansible, um, I I had an engineering team that I was working with, and they um, they had a requirement to stand up an entire uh, cluster of OpenStack uh, compute nodes and storage nodes, um, get RabbitMQ working, uh, get various APIs working, uh, get a web UI working, basically stand up a, a tremendous amount of infrastructure. And it had to be done uh, for, a, for a paying customer. And in my mind, I thought, well, that's going to take, you know, minimum three or four weeks if we're lucky, maybe two or three people. Uh, we were able to do it with Ansible in less than a week, and that was using um, using software that was still uh, in development, um, still a, a little bit rough around the edges. But Ansible and all the modules that are available with it. Um, simplified and streamlined things in such a way that I didn't believe was possible at that point. So again, I'm a raving fan of Ansible. I think it's a great product. So um, as noted uh, previously, we've only uh, scratched the surface here. Um, there are a series of tasks uh, which have to be done uh, before you get to that final point where you have a, a service catalog in ServiceNow, which you can run uh, to do some work. Uh, before you get to that point, we have to uh, create the Ansible playbooks, which will do the work. We have to add those Ansible playbooks to Ansible Tower. Uh, we have to create OAuth2 tokens. Uh, we have to register Ansible Tower as an OAuth2 provider in ServiceNow. We have to create the service catalog items. So 
it's quite a bit of work um, and it all has to be tied together. Uh, but again, Alcor has expertise doing this and we have a, a whole team of people who've been uh, doing this consistently and reliably for quite some time. So let's look at a case study. So um, one of our customers is in healthcare. They're uh, located in North America. They have 6,500 employees. Uh, they reached out to us because they were in the midst of a complex reorg. They had a large set of tools because of their mergers. Uh, at the same time, they're under a lot of pressure uh, to solve some of their challenges that these tools had created. In a nutshell, um, they had a lot of pieces of software that could do automation tasks or cloud management tasks, but they had a fair bit of overlap between these tools and a number of silos. So the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the challenge that this particular company was facing was that they had tools that could get the work done, um, but there wasn't one consistent way of doing things. And so I see this uh, with a lot of companies, uh, particularly when these companies are the product of mergers. Um, if you take a look at my profile on LinkedIn, I've done a fair bit of work in the finance sector. And something that we see in finance quite a bit is that you will have um, companies which acquire other companies. And then when they acquire those other companies, the other companies often have their own set of ways of doing things and their own set of tools and scripts. And this way of doing things is not compatible with the company that just acquired them. Um, the same thing happens with uh, spinoffs, uh, just in reverse. So our particular uh, customer in this healthcare space, they were dealing with this challenge and they came to us uh, looking to streamline this process and to also make this process more secure. Um, and I think that the end goal here was to get to a point where they could have a documented way of doing things and that they could um, segment their enterprise in such a way that a certain set of users could do a certain set of tasks, another set of users could do a different set of tasks, uh, and possibly these two different sets of users are at uh, different levels of um, how would I put it, uh, different security levels. Uh, so basically the ability to, for instance, bring somebody on at a fairly junior level and have them do tasks, but without giving them root level access to a bunch of Linux servers. So, um, Kind of, a, kind of uh, extending on what I was discussing a moment ago. Again, this is um, it's a real challenge um, from a security perspective when we see companies like this, because uh, you know, let's say that you're uh, again a company with six thousand five hundred employees, tens of thousands of servers. Uh, those servers are a combination of Windows and Linux. Now. You know, something as basic as uh, installing a package or something as basic as running a YUM update on a, on a Linux server or a fleet of servers. If you don't have your tools set up properly, uh, you wind up in a situation where you have to give um, elevated privileges to users. And in a worst case scenario, uh, you might even have to let them log into servers individually. So from a security perspective, we want to get away from that. 
um, if you have if you have somebody tasked with doing these things, you ideally do not want to give them the opportunity to, you know, reboot 10,000 Linux servers or shut them down or even break something accidentally. Um, one of the, one of the uh, biggest outages I've ever seen in my life was when a particular user had uh, unzipped a archive onto a series of Linux servers and because of their elevated privileges, uh, it blew away important files uh, that the operating system depended on. So basically this person was not being malicious, uh, they just accidentally trashed uh, thousands of Linux servers and it created, I mean, it, it was catastrophic uh, because, you know, number one, you have a, a bunch of servers which are now no longer functional. Uh, number two, when we are looking to um, when we're when we're looking to fix issues like this, you know, from an operational perspective, uh, you typically would have, you know, maybe how to put it. So if you're trying to fix a single Linux system which is trashed, you know, you would typically restore from a backup. But what do you do if you trash a thousand servers? Now you have a much bigger problem because it just overwhelms the system. Um, so from a security perspective, we want to do things in such a way that we remove the possibility that people can do that to, to a large extent. So I think that's um, a big part of automation is um, controlling who has access to what and who can do what. And this is, this is, um, a big part of the power of Ansible and ServiceNow. Again, going back to the example of doing a yum update, uh, you can create a playbook that does that. You can have that playbook triggered by ServiceNow. The endpoint is exposed by Ansible Tower. Um, you can make this repeatable and you can make it secure before you roll it out uh, to a number of systems. It's um it's a really elegant solution. Now another part, I'm kind of you know probably a little bit too focused on security, <laughs> but um another important part here uh, is streamlining the operations. So again, going back to our our case study uh, with the customer that we did this integration for, a big part of what we were doing was to give them what I would call a, a single pane of glass. And so what I mean by that is that it gives us an ability to get the work done through ServiceNow and we can, you know, we still have the tools in the background. There, there's still scripts in the background. There are PowerShell, Bash, Python. Um, we still have cloud native tools uh, that are out there, but the catch is that we limit access to those to only the power users. Um, the, the, the development is is separated from the operations teams, and this um, this streamlines the day to day uh, work of getting things done in IT. Um, but it also makes it more supportable. That's another um, I think another big challenge I've seen before we were coming up with solutions like this is you would have a new hire on the team, and you realize that there's just so much tribal knowledge of how to do things. Uh, I, I've seen companies where they had 100,000 servers and 10,000 of them were managed by one team, 80,000 were managed by another team. The, the two teams weren't talking to each other. They weren't sharing documentation. And even worse, a lot of it wasn't documented at all. So these solutions that I describe they really make getting the work done more secure and more efficient. Now, I'll, uh, I'll concede that Alcor largely works uh, with, with pretty large companies, you know, everything from uh, Walmart, uh, we've, we've done some work with uh, this particular customer in the healthcare field, they're, uh, they're very large. So these solutions that I describe are particularly 
optimum for a large company. Um, for a for a small you know small enterprise of you know maybe 100 servers or three or four engineers, uh, these might be overkill. Uh, but especially when you scale to tens of thousands or over 100,000 servers, uh, these solutions become very powerful. In summary, uh, ServiceNow is an excellent platform with widespread adoption in the enterprise. Ansible is one of the most popular automation tools currently available with a deep set of modules that streamline and expedite automation. Ansible Tower provides an API that can be leveraged to execute Ansible playbooks via ServiceNow. The process of implementing these integrations is complex, but the benefits are substantial. To do this successfully requires unique insight in both ServiceNow and Ansible. Alcor has completed a number of these integrations and we have the expertise to complete it for you. Uh, reach out to us at alcortech.com to schedule a discussion. And um, I think the key takeaways here, uh, if I may, Alcor is an elite partner of ServiceNow. Uh, because of that status, we have um, incredible expertise with ServiceNow. I, I've never seen a ServiceNow project that we couldn't figure out. I mean, we've we've got ServiceNow down cold. At the same time, uh, we also have a uh, a great group of engineers focused on the DevOps space. Um, we have Red Hat certified engineers. We have Azure certified engineers. Uh, ServiceNow certified engineers, of course, Oracle certified engineers. I think the uh, I think the thing that's kind of unique about Alcor is that we are agnostic as far as the software that you want to run. Um, if you come to us and you are doing Azure and Red Hat Ansible, you know that's that's perfectly fine for us. If you're doing AWS. Uh, that's fine too. We're not going to send you down the path of a specific solution. And I think this is something that I've seen with a lot of lot of competing software companies is that they often have a specific stack of software that they want you to adopt. Uh, we don't do that at all. Our focus is getting the project done, getting it done efficiently, getting it done securely, um, getting it done the optimum way. Um, it, again, this particular webinar is focused on ServiceNow and focused on Ansible, uh, but we've also done integrations with just about every piece of software you can imagine. Um, as mentioned earlier, there are ways to do these integrations directly with tools from AWS, uh, directly with tools from Azure. Um, you can uh, speak with providers like OpenStack and OpenShift. Uh, it's pretty amazing what you can integrate with ServiceNow. And the focus of this particular presentation has been the foc has been on uh, ServiceNow and Ansible. Now, um, as mentioned, this has been kind of a high-level overview of the process. And if you'd like to get uh, further into the details, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I am John Van Omen at alcortech.com. Uh, Sherry Curtis Banks is the leader of the ITOM practice. Uh, you can also reach out to her as well. Um, and if the material in this presentation has piqued your curiosity, uh, we'd love to talk about it with you further and we can um, go much deeper into it. Again, uh, there's there's a, a lot of other parts, a lot of other moving pieces here um, that we've kind of glossed over in the interest of time. Speaking of that, uh, I believe I've got I believe I've got time for some questions. Of course. Oh. Of course, yes. And uh, here's a, so much, John. a wall of footnotes for people who are really interested. Um, again, it's a complex topic and these footnotes alone amount to well over 100 pages of reading, um, but they can give you a start. Um, but better yet, 
I'd recommend uh, reaching out to us. Uh, we can save you the trouble <laughs> of um, doing all this work. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the webinar, John. And um, as you mentioned, it is uh, right now time to go to our questions section uh, and discuss a couple of questions that we have. Uh, first of all, I uh, wanted to address the most common question about the presentation. Yes, we will uh, make sure to share with you the recording. Um, if you would like to have this PDF that John is referring to, feel free to leave the comment for us in the chat box and we will distribute the PDF file to you as well. Um, so we will await, you know, for your notes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we can address some of the questions that we already have here. And then just a reminder, guys, if you have more questions, please feel free to send them uh, to us. Uh, John, uh, here is uh, the first question I have here. Uh, what is the advantage of combining Ansible Tower with ServiceNow? So, um, I think, how to put this? So, as mentioned earlier in the presentation, the popularity of Ansible has really skyrocketed in the last five years in particular. Um, the, the tool isn't isn't very old, um, but its its use has just exploded. the The thing about Ansible Tower is that it provides this API endpoint to run the Ansible playbooks. Um, we haven't covered it in this presentation, but I believe it, it's probably possible to run the Ansible playbooks without Tower. I think you may be able to use a, a ServiceNow mid-server to run the Ansible playbooks, but the advantage of Tower is it simplifies things, um, it secures things, uh, it makes them easier to support. So it is admittedly an additional cost over Ansible by itself, uh, but in, in my opinion, it's well worth it for most customers. Perfect. Thank you so much for addressing this question, John. Uh, here is the next one. What are the advantages of using Ansible Tower over Ansible by itself? Oh, <laughs> um, that was, I think I kind of kind of jumped the gun on that one. But um, as noted just a, a moment ago, uh, Tower basically gives us an API um, that Ansible doesn't have by itself. So you could, I, I need to qualify that statement. I was going to say you could use Ansible alone. Actually, actually, whether you can use Ansible alone is still an open question because we have, with all of our integrations with customers, we've used Ansible Tower. Um, I believe it may be possible to work with Ansible alone using a mid-server, um, but somebody out there would have to uh, would have to prove that first. Um, and uh, in, in a nutshell. If you're um, if you're an enterprise customer, I think Ansible Tower is pretty much a no-brainer if you're using Ansible. All right, and then we do have one more question. And before I uh, read the, that one out, uh, just a reminder for everyone: if you guys do have any more questions, please send them to us in the chat. Uh, so this is the question that we have left, uh, John. Can Ansible Tower be substituted with Project AWX, uh, the open source version of Ansible Tower? Uh, yes, it can. Um, this is something that we see a lot, which is that uh, we have some customers who use the, um, the, how to put it, the supported products from Red Hat. So that's you know Red Hat Linux, uh, Ansible Tower, um, things like that. We also have a segment of our customers who prefer to do the support themselves. Uh, so these are customers that are running CentOS and customers who are running AWX. Um, either one can be done. It just kind of comes down to your comfort level on whether you want to support the software yourself. You know, so for instance, if you opt to go with AWX and you have issues getting it to run, 
um, you have to, you know, that's, you have to figure that out yourself. Um, if you go with Ansible Tower, uh, you can get the support from Red Hat. Um, and keep in mind that the, these projects are both run by Red Hat. You know, so for instance, the people who do CentOS, um, those are Red Hat employees. But the, the key to it is that you can't reach out to them because you have a support ticket. Um, you have to purchase the um, supported products to get that support. And, you know, particularly with an enterprise customer that has, you know, 50,000 or 100,000 servers, um, it would quickly become impractical um, to not use a supported uh, version of the software. But at the same time, um, we have other customers where they, the benefits of not paying for support um, are worthwhile. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of one customer in particular uh, where they just, they use a, a fleet of systems and all those systems are nearly identical. You know, in that, in that particular scenario, they don't have a lot of drift uh, between the various um, instances. And so because of that, um, the support model is not as appealing. All right, great. Well, these are the all questions we got so far. Uh, I wanted to thank you, John, for this great webinar. Uh, the recording of today's webinar will be available on our website, www.alcortag.com. Uh, we will also send you the recording via email. And if you texted us that you need a uh, PDF file, we will also share that with you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining, and we will see you at our next webinar. Thanks again. Thank you, John.